Today, on the day of the Holy Trinity, which is Orthodox Pentecost, we start our blog, The Holy Land Today. In this video, we will visit Mount Zion and its holy places, the Cenacle and the Tomb of King David. We will also tell you how Orthodox Christians celebrate Day of the Holy Spirit in Jerusalem. I don't think it's a coincidence that we decided to start this project of ours on the day of the Orthodox Pentecost because the major theme of all the liturgical prayers uh, as practiced in the Orthodox Byzantine Rite is that this is the day when God gave us the gift of the tongues where the uh, false unity of the Tower of Babel was replaced by the unity in the spirit, unity of different nations because when you say different tongues it doesn't necessarily mean only different languages or dialects but different approaches different approaches to the truth different approaches uh, to Christ here in Jerusalem you can actually see how all this is put into practice you don't need to idealize the Christian unity in Jerusalem it doesn't really exist on a any official level but nevertheless it's still there it's still all around the place when you can hear people glorifying uh, the Lord in different languages according to a variety of traditions it doesn't mean that everybody is always in such a great uh, relationship of honor and respect and all that it's not exactly the case but nevertheless it does in a way testify to the multi-formal way of praising uh, the Holy Trinity. So, we are walking to the Cenacle and we pass the walls of the old city. I must stop here and say that Raphael is absolutely right when he speaks about multicultural place. Jerusalem is a multicultural place. In times of Jesus Christ, it was a multicultural place. But what united peoples here was faith in one God and the idea of the temple. So if we talk about Abrahamic religions, Judaism, uh, Islam and Christianity, we can say that Jerusalem always was a place where people who believe in one God gathered before Christ and after Christ, both locals and pilgrims. Uh, in Christ's times, pilgrims would come here, Jews from Diaspora, from Libya, from Persia, from Alexandria. In our days, people, people from all around the world come here to worship the tomb of Christ. So, uh, thanks to Pentecost, Jerusalem became a place of wide, wider gathering. More people come here and uh, find this place holy for them and find that their prayer is stronger and heard better. This is a very interesting phenomenon, which we will discuss later. Meanwhile, we will touch the walls just for one second to feel the warmth of the stone. By the way, the stone is called limestone. This is a natural stone here in Jerusalem and not only the walls of the old city, but all the buildings here are constructed. So we have some lovely kids here passing by. Hello, hi. So this is a Muslim family. We have uh, our local Arabic uh, population consists of Muslims and Christians. In some of the videos we will definitely discuss it and show you uh, mosques and church and Arabic churches and everything. But meanwhile, you just had a glimpse on uh, our locals. Uh, as for Jews living here, they are also multicultural because, trust me, Jews from Ethiopia, Jews from the former Soviet Union and Jews from Poland or Germany have not much in common. But this is another story. Let's proceed. We're going to Mount Zion. <laughs> So 
So we are on the top of Mount Zion. Mount Zion is actually a western hill of Jerusalem. Behind me is uh, the Zion Gate. In times of Christ, this place was not called so. We don't know how it was called. We know that it was just a neighborhood, a western neighborhood, by the way, uh, very close to the Temple Mount. So only rich people could afford uh, a dwelling or a house here. And definitely it was inside the walls. So this line of the wall, which you see now, was constructed in the 16th century by Sultan Suleiman the Magnificent. He rebuilt the walls of Jerusalem and created the seven gates which exist till now. We don't know why his architects decided to put the wall here. And thus the Sultan lost quite a large piece of the old city. And as the legend says, the architects were executed. Today, this place is not actually a neighborhood because very few people actually live here. Uh, Mount Zion is occupied by monasteries, churches, and a few synagogues. This place is also holy for the Jews. Why, I'll explain to you a bit later. Let's go to the Senecal. The name Senecal comes from Latin. It literally means the dining room. In medieval times, the room where the Holy Spirit alighted unto the apostles was believed to be the same room where Jesus dined with his disciples for the last time. So the place was called an upper room or Senecal. However, historically, this tradition is not correct. According to Eusebius of Caesarea, in the first century there were seven synagogues in this neighborhood, neither of which had been preserved by his time, which is the fourth century, except for one. This synagogue was believed to be the place where the apostles and the Virgin Mary received the Holy Spirit. Saint Helen transformed it into a church, which was severely damaged during the Persian invasion in the 7th century. The second floor of the building was added in the 12th century by the Crusaders. This beautiful medieval church is closed now, but it used to be a very lively place not so long ago. Christians of all tongues and races had it in their pilgrimage itineraries, so at times it was quite noisy in here. Orthodox prayer can be heard here on the day of the Holy Spirit, the second day of Pentecost. After the liturgy in the Church of the Patriarchal School of Zion, a procession goes to the Senecal and the third kneeling prayer is read here. A short Latin follows. <laughs> The place where the clergy stands is called a mirab, as the Senecal was transformed into a mosque after the defeat of the Crusaders in the 13th century. The mirab is a semicircular niche in the wall of a mosque or a house that indicates the direction to Mecca that Muslims should face when praying. This video was shot last year. This year only the clergy was allowed to enter the Senecal, but the procession took place as usual and you will see it in the end of this video. However, the original place of apostolic gatherings was not this medieval church, but the first floor of the building. 
Let's go there and visit the place. Since 1948, the first floor has been a synagogue. This place is very important to Jews because the tomb of King David has been allocated there since medieval times. There is an argument around this monument. Some consider it being just a cenotaph, while others believe it to cover King David's real grave. The synagogue is divided into two praying halls, for men and for women. Here we see a massive tombstone or cenotaph, which is about four meters long. This is King David's grave. Above it are the remains of the first century synagogue and the church. Here the Holy Spirit, in the shape of the fire tongues, alighted onto the apostles, and our church was born. The Jewish women are reading psalms written by King David. They are waiting for the Messiah to come. This wall is considered to be very old. Some date it to the Herodian period, which could mean 10 years before Christ. So, these stones may also remember the day of Pentecost. As I have already said, there are a few houses on Mount Zion today. People who live here are religious Jews. The houses are quite poor and small, but people value the opportunity to live near King David's tomb. One of the buildings is a yeshiva, a religious school for Jewish boys. So here we are on the rooftop of the cenacle. We couldn't get inside, but we remember that after the apostles received the Holy Spirit, they preached. And as you remember, many people heard them and they thought that they were drunk from wine. How could so many people hear them? We know that after Peter preached, 3,000 um, were received in the church. So most likely he preached from the roof. In the Middle East, the roof is a very important part of the house. That's why the roofs are always flat. People dry laundry here, people drink coffee uh, in the evening because it's very hot in Jerusalem and it's very fresh and nice to sit on the roof. So that's why people uh, make roof balconies all around. And in ancient times, people preached from the roofs so that crowds who gathered down uh, in narrow streets could hear them very well. We can say with certainty that Jesus Christ talked to his disciples and preached to people on the rooftops or from the rooftops many times during his mission. This is certain and obvious. The view here is simply stunning. You can see the Mount of Olives and the place of the ascension of our Lord. It is right here where the red mark is. And here is the dome of the Domitian Abbey, the spot where the house of St. John stood. The Virgin Mary lived and reposed here. The minaret is on the left. On the right is a bell tower which belongs to the Armenian monastery. The monastery marks the place of Caiaphas house. Jesus was tried here before his crucifixion. Let's go down and explore Mount Zion a bit more. We are on the way to the Greek Patriarchate School of Zion. It was very quiet here this Sunday evening, the Holy Trinity Day when we were filming this. The sun colored the dry grass in gold and the old pine trees made a very picturesque sight in the last rays of the lowering sun. Originally Pentecost is um, an Old Testament holiday which marks the end of the harvest of wheat 
So here on this field, you do have this rural feeling. Yesterday morning, on the day of the Holy Spirit, the place was full of people. The liturgy took place in the school's church. The church occupies the first floor of the school building. It's a boys' boarding school where religious subjects make a large part of the curriculum. All the students are Greek speakers. After graduation, the majority stay in Jerusalem and become members of the Brotherhood of the Holy Tomb, Agiotaphites. Uh, monks who serve in the churches of the Jerusalem Patriarchate and guard the holy places. The Patriarch and most of the bishops of Jerusalem Patriarchate are graduates of this school. The procession went as usual this year. Social distancing was tried to be kept, though. This year, however, only 50 people were allowed by the police to proceed to the Senecal. The rest waited for the procession to return near the ancient underground church. Let's go down and have a look. According to our local tradition, when the persecution started, the apostles and their disciples prayed here because of the fear of Jews. This church is believed to be one of the first Christian churches uh, built in Jerusalem. Before leaving Mount Zion, we need to visit just one more place. There is an Orthodox cemetery just behind the school building. This cemetery is the only Orthodox cemetery in the city. All the other cemeteries are either Jewish or Muslim. As well as the holy city itself, the cemetery is international. The space here is very limited, so some new graves are made in the wall. 
Here we see some Russian and Jewish names. The people who were buried here came to Israel from the former Soviet Union. Many got baptized here in Israel. And here are some Arabic graves. It is a special blessing to visit the cemetery on this day. By Holy Spirit, every soul is brought back to life, is united with God. And for God there is no death. The cemetery today indeed looks like a place full of light and peace, where people in quiet sleep are waiting for resurrection. The procession will stop here on its way back to the church for a short prayer for the reposed. The procession is returning back to the church. Our clergy consists of both Greek and local Palestinian priests. The bishop who served today is Archbishop Philumenus of Pella. He comes from a local Christian family and was born in Jordan. The parish gathered on Zion today is multinational. Monastics and lay people of various nationalities among which Palestinians, Greeks, Romanians and Russians. That is all for today. We hope to be on air next week. Will the blessings of our Lord be with you?